Thank you. Isn't it a wonderful time to be a Bible-believing Christian? It's not because it's getting easier, it's because it's getting harder, and the harvest is ripe out there. We have a wonderful opportunity to go out and be witnesses, and we're going to talk about some of that uh, tonight, trying to arm you with some basic information so you can go out there and bring down the strongholds as we're commanded to do in Corinthians. So two talks tonight, cloning stem cells and the value of life, and then astronomy in the Bible. And we'll have a short break in between so you can go down. We brought several resources with us. We're also the group who have heard, anybody been to our museum yet? We opened May 28th, $27 million museum, debt free. To date, we... To date, we've had over 20,000 visitors. So people are pouring in at about between 900 and 1,000 a day now. We've got bus loads coming from churches every week now. People are getting to see firsthand the only museum like this in the entire world that promotes the authority of God's word and good science all the way through. In there you see animatronic dinosaurs moving around. You'll see a planetarium, and the show in the planetarium is so powerful, we have people coming out with tears in their eyes because they never realized how big our God is. So we have a lot of video going on in there. But I want to go ahead and get started with cloning stem cells in life because this is a very powerful talk, very hard to do. And I always like to do this in front of high school students also. I'm trying to get in front of high school students all across the country to do this talk because it's simply not being taught in even in Christian schools. They're missing it. So our topics will be cloning. What, are the, what have been the results of cloning? Stem cells, what are they? Then we'll come back to a little more on cloning. Then we're going to finish up with the value of life. When does life, human life, really begin? And what have we done with it? So let's start. What is cloning? When we do cloning, we're not creating anything new. What we're doing is creating a genetically identical copy of some animal or creature. It's similar to creating an identical or having an identical twin. So are we creating anything new? No, we're not. We're using the DNA that already exists and just putting it together with something else. So we're not creating anything new here. Similar to identical twin. How many remember Hello Dolly? Hello Dolly, 1996, over there in Scotland. A six-year-old sheep was cloned. They took the cells out of a healthy six-year-old sheep and cloned Dolly, cloned that sheep. Now, something about cloning. We don't create anything new has nothing to do with evolution. It actually supports the biblical model of creation because all cloning involves intelligent genetic engineering. There's absolutely no random chance in here whatsoever. So it shows that in order to make this life, it requires intelligence. And cloning is all about DNA. It's all about DNA. Depends on our DNA. Now, you take your DNA. We have in our DNA, or it's made up of these tightly coiled things called chromosomes. Anybody here have chromosomes in you? Okay, if you don't, you're a rock. So we all have chromosomes. Now, how many of you have only 16 unique chromosomes? Anybody have just 16 unique chromosomes here? Okay, so we have no onions here tonight. <laughs> how many of you have just six unique chromosomes? Okay, we have no mosquitoes here. How about 24? How many of you have 24 unique chromosomes? Okay, we have a few tomatoes tonight. <laughs> I have another slide here. How about 78? There's a big number. How many, anybody have 78? Nobody, how many trust me anymore? <laughs> okay, 78, we have no hands. How about 40? Who's heard the 40 now? Okay, we have some people voting twice now. <laughs> no mice, how about 46? Okay, we have a couple with 46. If you have 46, you're a human being. What are the rest of you? And incidentally, this is a picture of the grandchildren. They do have 46 unique chromosomes. That makes them 100% human beings. Oh, but wait a minute, Mike. What about people with Down syndrome? They have more than 46 chromosomes. Yes, they do. But they still have 46 unique chromosomes. What they do is they have an extra copy of chromosome number 21. So they are still 100% human beings. So 46 makes you human. Anybody here want to have 48? 48, you can either be a monkey or a banana. Take your choice. <laughs> so chromosomes. We all have chromosomes. Now let me talk about how they did Dolly now. This is how they do cloning. 
they take the nucleus or the DNA out of a sheep egg. So there's your sheep egg in sheep A there. They take the nucleus out of that. So now we have an empty egg. Then what we do is we take sheep B, take the DNA out of one of the sheep cells, out of Dolly, and put it into that egg. You see what we're doing? Are we creating anything new? No, we're taking the DNA out of an egg, then taking the DNA from a cell and putting it into that egg. And then we get a clone. We do a little bit of magic with it. That's really not magic, a little bit of chemical engineering. And we have Dolly. Now, we all heard about Hello, Dolly. How many of you heard about Goodbye, Dolly? That didn't make the news very much. It simply didn't make the news. Dolly, at age three, was already showing signs of premature aging. She died at age six of old age and other diseases. Something went terribly wrong with the cloning. And it's all about DNA. You see, when Dolly was born, her DNA was already six years old. Because remember, they took the DNA out of that sheep that was already six years old and put it into that egg. When Dolly was born, she was already, her DNA was already six years old. Something has gone dreadfully wrong with cloning. Let's go back to your chromosomes. Your chromosomes. Now, in your chromosomes, you have all your DNA. We talk about DNA. And they talk about DNA, they used to say about 3% of that DNA is useful. About 3% codes for making proteins. And then, according to evolutionists, they say, oh, the other 97%, it is not useful, it's just junk, it's left over from our evolutionary days when we don't need it anymore. Well, that is one of the perfect examples of what evolution has done to good science. It has hindered good scientific research, because nobody ever bothered to look for what the other 97% did. So they just ignored it. And that is bad science. It's one of the greatest bad sciences we've had in our day, examples of bad science. Because we have discovered that other 97%, even though it's done code for making proteins, is very, very important. What we have discovered is a lot of that turns switches on and off. And if you take that out of there, you're dead. You see what evolution has done to good science, good scientific research? They've hindered it all along the way, because if they don't understand something, we don't bother with it. It's not that these people aren't smart. They're very smart. But they just have a different worldview. And how we interpret the evidence is based on your worldview. So it's not that they're being dishonest. Don't ever call people dishonest because they don't believe the Bible and they believe in evolution. It's just their worldview means every bit of evidence has to be interpreted according to their worldview. And their worldview says there is no supernatural creator. That is the evolution worldview. So they interpret the evidence based on that. But now, we have discovered that other parts of the DNA is very useful. But there's another part of your DNA. It's into each one of your chromosomes. Now, anybody here have 46 chromosomes? Okay, you all have 46. Okay. At the end of each one of your chromosomes is a little special area we call telomeres. Telomeres. Now, as far as we know, these telomeres don't code for making any proteins, and they don't turn any switches on or off. What they are, they are buffer areas between your chromosomes so they don't run together. And here's what happens. Every time your cells replicate, the DNA also gets replicated. And that part of that DNA gets lost. And what gets lost are those telomeres. So every time your cells replicate, those telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter. And when they get short enough, that becomes a dead cell. can no longer replicate. In other words, what we have in our bodies is programmed cell death. We are actually programmed to die. Anybody have an idea when that might have started? <laughs> right. The Bible tells us the fall. That's when we started the death process. Well, let's give me, let me give you an example. Here's some telomere base, an example in white blood cells. Let's suppose at age zero you're born, you have 8,000 base pairs of telomeres separating your chromosomes. And as you age, those cells replicate, and the telomeres get shorter and shorter. Maybe at age 35, they're down to 3,000 base pairs. As you age more, about age 65, they're down to about 1,500 base pairs, and they get shorter and shorter, and eventually that becomes a dead cell. Now, when we go back to Dolly, what was happening with Dolly? When she was born, her DNA was already six years old. In other words, the telomeres were already short. Not only did she die of old age at a very young age, there were other diseases that got in there also. Something has gone dreadfully wrong with cloning. 
What they also didn't tell you is it took 277 attempts to get Dolly. That means 276 failures. So the question is, how many failures is it going to take to produce a human clone? Even though it has been banned worldwide, does not mean it has completely stopped. And what will those failures look like? Now, we've cloned lots of animals. We've cloned lots of animals. We've cloned calves, mice, mules. What they don't tell you, they, they hits the newspaper, they have cloned these animals. What they don't tell you is what happened to them afterward. Every one of these cloned animals has died or is dying a horrible death. Something has gone dreadfully wrong. We've done piglets, five clone female piglets. We've even done cats. There's an organization out there today, you can pay $10,000 to clone your cat. What they won't tell you is what's going to happen to that cat. And also, they're not telling you is that cat will not necessarily look the same on the outside. See, all it is is a genetically identical copy, which means it can look different. See, there's the clone cat, and there's the mother beside it. They may not even have the same temperament. So if you clone a cat or a dog, it can come out very different. Let me show you some future experiments. Now, these are just... Because what we are doing today, is we're doing a lot of wonderful things in genetics. We're going to cure and heal a lot of diseases out there with genetics. But like anything else, we're a fallen group. And what we do for good, we can also do for bad. For example, the Internet. Isn't the Internet a wonderful tool? But look what it's done to a lot of people. And we're going to do the same thing in genetics. We're now actually taking DNA from two different creatures and putting them together and coming up with a third creature. We've been successful with some of that. But let me show you what we might do in the future. Here's some future experiments. Maybe we'll produce the Zebaroo. Anybody want one of those? <laughs> Maybe we'll come up with the Tiger Bunny. <clears throat> We're doing lots of things here in genetics. Now, these are, we haven't really done anything like this, but maybe. Maybe we'll have the birdfish. <laughs> you take your fish out for a walk every day. Or how about the cat cow? Anybody on farms? How about one of these? <laughs> or maybe for you bird lovers, how'd you like to have this on your finger? <laughs> the sparrow boxer. Or how about this one, the old tiger owl? <laughs> and then a face only a mother could love uh, after this butter cat. <laughs> how about the catrilla? Wouldn't you like to take one of those home with you tonight? Now, this is more facetious, but uh, we are doing a lot of wonderful things with genetics, but we're on the border of creating some things. We're not sure what's going to happen, especially when we start dealing with foods. Now they're trying to say it's okay to eat the foods from cloned animals. When we talk about cloning, there's really two types of cloning. There's reproductive cloning and therapeutic cloning. We need to understand the difference. And also, is either type good? Well, let's look at this. The goal of reproductive cloning is to produce a baby. That's what they did with Dolly and many other animals. The goal of therapeutic cloning is to produce stem cells for research or treatment. So that brings in something new now. We've been talking about cloning, but now we bring up the idea of stem cells. What are stem cells? We need to go into this because there's so much misinformation being given by the media. What are stem cells? Then we'll come back to cloning. Stem cells, they're the body's master cells. They can develop into tissues and other cells. They have the ability to what we call differentiate into other types of cells in the body. They have the ability to self-regenerate themselves, make copies of themselves. So the two things they can do, they make copies of themselves, and they can also become other cells in the body for different parts of the body. So they're the master cells in the body. And there's also two types of stem cells. This doesn't come out in the media that often. Two types of stem cells, embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. We need to clear up the difference. In this country, we have said no federal funding for embryonic stem cells. But you don't hear that in the news, do you? What you hear is no federal funding for stem cell research. That is not true. That is misleading the entire public when they make that statement. The truth is there's no federal funding 
for embryonic stem cells. However, it is happening at the state level. They're now pouring in billions of dollars into funding embryonic stem cells. So let's look at this. Human embryonic development. Everybody remember when you started as a single cell? Okay. Well, you, got a, you started as a single cell, then two cell, four cell, eight cell, then day five, you become what we call a blastocyst. Blastocyst. You remember that? At day five. Okay. Some of you remember that. This is where we get the embryonic stem cells from. It's called the inner cell mass, ICM, inner cell mass. Once we get to day five, we have all these embryonic stem cells inside there, and it's called the inner cell mass. Here's what happens. The inner cell mass is where we get the embryonic stem cells, and they have the capability of self-renewal or, creating, copy, or ca creating copies of themselves, and they can also become other kinds of cells, pluripotency. In other words, they can give rise to other types of cells on up to what we call the germ-level cells, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Those are the three different germ layers. Not that they're germs. Don't think they're germs. We just call them different layers. We just call them a germ. They're really not germs. They, these cells now develop into the heart muscles, the lungs, the skin, and all the other kinds of cells in your body. And at this point is where we, the adult stem cells begin to develop. In other words, we start with the embryonic stem cells. They start making copies of themselves and also becoming other kinds of cells, which you see here, the endo ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm type cells, which develop into all the different parts of the body. And that's where the adult stem cells get started right there. That's where adult stem cells are. Now, let's talk about something, the difference between adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells. Now, you saw where the adult stem cells start. Does that mean adult stem cells only come from adults? No, it doesn't. They're very, they get developed very early in the embryonic development. In the very beginnings of the baby's development inside the woman's womb, we start generating adult stem cells. So adult stem cells, what they are, is any stem cell that is non-embryonic. You know what we mean by embryo, embryonic? Baby. Human baby. Inside that human embryo are all the instructions for a human being. All the instructions. Now, embryonic stem cells, what they say is they have a definite advantage. They have the capability of what we say differentiating into all the over 200 different kinds of cells in the body. That is a plus. Embryonic stem cells can grow and become any kind of cell in the body. Therefore, we should be using them. We should be doing a lot of research there because we can use them for any part in your body to heal it. They call that a plus. Then they say the adult stem cells. They're still saying they don't have that capability. These adult stem cells really can't differentiate like that. They can only become a single kind of cell in the body. But that has now been proven false. See, they hadn't done their research again. The adult stem cells have now been proven to be able to become any kind of cell in the body. Do we see any advantage now for embryonic stem cells there? Absolutely not. None whatsoever. Adult stem cells, what they do, the, the amazing thing about these cells is inside that DNA are these instructions. And sometimes those instructions get turned off. But what we can do now is we know how to get them turned back on. Just the latest now, we can actually take some of these adult stem cells and make them go backwards and go all the way back to the beginning so they become anything in the body. There's amazing things we're doing genetics now. Let's talk about embryonic stem cells again. Capable of becoming any of the over 200 different kinds of cells in the body. They say that's a plus. But the stem cells, or get this, early embryo. What is an embryo? It's a baby. Human baby are disrupted. What do we call that? When we disrupt, disrupt the growth of an embryo? That is called abortion. That is called abortion. That's what embryonic stem cell research is all about. Abortion. And we need to make sure we understand that right there. Disrupted from the natural development through chemical manipulation to become specific tissue types. Now, what they are doing is destroying a human baby and taking the parts or the cells from it to help heal somebody else. What does that sound like? That's what it is. That's what it is. Notice this word. Expectation is they will be used to treat unhealthy or diseased tissue. Notice the word expectation. 
what that implies is they have done nothing. Embryonic stem cells have healed or treated nothing in humans to date, absolutely nothing. What they have done in many cases is grow tumors in animals. That's all they've been able to achieve so far. Adult stem cells are an alternative, though. They do not involve the destruction of a human embryo. You can actually use your own cells to treat yourself. Wow. You know what that means? No tissue rejection. Where the embryonic stem cells, you have to use somebody else's. Limited differentiation, not true. We have now been able to see that these stem cells, adult stem cells, can become any kind of cell in the body. There are many clinical advantages over embryonic stem cells. Again, no tissue rejection, and they're found in many places in your body. Where? Where are they found? Bone marrow, umbilical cord, blood, blood vessels, skeletal muscle, skin, heart, brain, cornea, retina, fat. Keep that fat. <laughs> so, see, there's, good, there's advantages to this. Adult stem cells, did you know they're currently used to treat over 70 different diseases? Embryonic stem cells have treated nothing. But adult stem cells are currently used to treat over 70 different diseases. Leukemia, breast cancer, liver disease, cornea restoration, brain tumors, arthritis, heart disease, ovarian cancer, and on down, all the way to sickle cell anemia. And that list has also grown. I'm going to show you some new ones. Adult stem cells have already been used to treat all these diseases. National Geographic, this was amazing. Here's a completely, world, a magazine has a worldview that says there is no creator God. But look what they put in there. In use for how long, these adult stem cells? Decades. Such transplants are an example of an adult stem cell therapy in which stem cells in donated bone marrow regenerate a patient's blood and immune system. Embryonic stem cells can't do that. The Institute of Medicine, National Academies, April 14th, says this. Blood from umbilical cords a byproduct of normal childbirth is a good source of potentially life-saving stem cells. Transplants of these stem cells have saved the lives of roughly 20,000 Americans with leukemia and lymphoma, sickle cell anemia, and so forth. 20,000 Americans have been treated with these adult stem cells. Did that make the news? Something is dreadfully wrong with our media. Adult stem cells. Here's the director of cardiac stem cell therapies in regenerative medicine. My clinical trials in more than 400 heart patients have shown that injection of adult stem cells improve the function of muscles and blood vessels at the site, allowing the patients to lead a near normal life. What do you think about all that money we're pouring into embryonic stem cells? Wouldn't it be nice if we could take that same money and pour it into adult stem cell research and start healing people, a lot of people are going to get hurt from all this monies pouring into embryonic stem cells because they're going to miss the opportunity. When it comes to stem cell therapies already boasting success, the eyes have it. The Italian Eye Bank Foundation are able to use adult stem cells from a patient's good eye to help repair the bad one. Wow. Did anybody see any of that in the news? How about this one? Director for the Center of Gene Therapy at Tulane University, Sciences Center. Mesenchymal stem cells, or multipotent cells, hold quite a bit of promise because they are easily obtained from a patient's bone marrow, that means adult stem cell, grow readily in culture, and present minimal immune system difficulties. We're calling them adult stem cell or progenitor cells. They have remarkable ability to heal tissues. Wow. Here's your National Institute of Health. Scientists have found adult stem cells in many more tissues than they once thought possible. This finding has led scientists to ask whether adult stem cells could be used for transplants. In fact, adult blood-forming stem cells from bone marrow have been used in transplants for 30 years. Certain kinds of adult stem cells seem to have the ability to differentiate into a number of different cell types. 30 years these have been used, but the media is ignoring it. October 1st, 31st, 2006, a breakthrough in non-embryonic stem cell research. Researchers in Great Britain achieved a medical breakthrough by growing a human liver using adult stem cells. Can you imagine what that will do for people with liver diseases now? 
Adult stem cells can be used to grow human livers. The tissue was created from blood taken from a baby's umbilical cord just after birth. University of Minnesota, November 13, 2006. Researchers at the University of Minnesota have for the first time coaxed umbilical cord blood stem cells to differentiate into a type of lung cell. Stem cells in teeth. Wow. Let's take a look at this. Easily accessible adult stem cells found in baby teeth and wisdom teeth, third molars, are a robust source of stem cells that have the ability to differentiate into a variety of cell types. Let's look at this. I actually called this company up. It's a Christian company. It's called Shed Stem Cells. Stem cells from human exfoliated deciduous teeth. You know what that means? Baby teeth. But it sounds good, doesn't it? Shed stem cells can be retrieved from the lost or extracted baby teeth of children. Shed can also be found in extracted wisdom teeth of people ages 17 through 29 years old. Well, I'm no longer there, but, but look what they can do. Shed cells have the natural ability to differentiate into nerve cells and induce new bone growth. Growth. You can bank your family's shed cells. In other words, from your children, when they lose their baby teeth, you can actually send those in or have them come. They will take the stem cells from those baby teeth, cryogenically freeze them. They can use them for your child later in life if they need some healing. This is amazing technology. What about embryonic stem cells? Dan Criswell, Ph.D. in molecular biology, makes this statement. Presently, no one has succeeded using embryonic stem cells for human therapeutic or reproductive cloning, and that is still true. They're still working on mice. Journal of Nature, Nature Medicine, October 23, 2006. Embryonic stem cell research suffers another setback. A draft report by the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine said there may be no more cures available after 10 years and $3 billion in state-approved bond funding for embryonic stem cell research. $3 billion being poured into that, and they don't think it's going to produce anything productive. Just think what that $3 billion could do to help people if they put it into the right stem cell research. I want to show you a case of deception. I want to show you what our media is like here. Two different reports about the same case, one from USA Today and the other one from Cord Blood Registry, two different magazines. Joseph Davis, Jr., 7, testifies before the Senate Health Policy Committee on the Stem Cell Research Bill, Tuesday in Tallahassee, Florida. Here's what USA Today printed. Stem cell Senate OK stem cell funding bill. In a largely symbolic act, the Senate voted Wednesday to lift restrictions on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. That's all they printed. It was all about embryonic stem cells. Now let me show you what really happened. That was 100% deception. They are deceiving the public. Here's the cord blood registry. Here's what they had to print. Young Joseph Davis, Jr., age 7, testifies before the Florida Senate Health Com Policy Committee on the importance of cord blood stem cell education. Joseph was cured of a life-threatening case of sickle cell anemia when the stem cells from the umbilical cord of his younger brother, Isaac, were used. You see, the whole thing was adult stem cells. It had nothing to do with embryonic stem cells. But you see the deception that goes on in the media now? It's all about adult stem cells. That is what is working. Cord blood stem cells, May 8, 2007. The blood remaining in an umbilical cord immediately after birth is a rich source of cord blood stem cells that can be collected easily and painlessly without risk to the newborn or mother. Cord blood stem cells are increasingly being used to improve and save lives and have been used in more than 8,000 transplants worldwide. What have embryonic stem cells done? Nothing but grow tumors. Today, they are used successfully to treat a wide range of blood diseases, genetic and metabolic disorders, immunodeficiencies, and certain forms of cancer. A number of medical research studies have demonstrated that cord blood stem cells are able to differentiate into multiple cell types. Now, here we go. The 16th Annual Biotech Conference held May 14th, 2007. I have to keep this talk updated. Every week I'm going out getting new things. Every week something new is happening with adult stem cells. And every week embryonic stem cells are growing tumors. Okay, here's from that research. 
The bladder study represents the culmination of over 17 years of research and development in engineered bladders. Starting in 1999, we transplanted the first laboratory-grown organs into patients with poor bladder function due to birth defects. 